Hi everyone, welcome to Garden Air. My name is Natalie and on this channel we talk all things gardening as well as cooking from scratch and homemaking and just anything that makes life a little bit better. And you'll also see my corgis. <laughs> they tend to be out here in the garden with me a lot so you might see them running around in the background. I'm just sitting here in my greenhouse today and it's been a busy few days because we had a really big storm come through the other day. A big part of our willow tree had fallen down and I'm going to show you that mess. Um, my vegetable garden thankfully is okay. Some of the corn got a little bit flattened so I'll show you what we did to help support the corn back up and um, just some of the mess and some of the cleanup that we did and we've had a few days of just uh trying to get everything back to order we've had a lot of wood to clean up and <laughs> it's been it's been pretty exhausting especially for my husband he worked really hard clearing out that tree mostly by himself with a chainsaw so uh it's <laughs> it's been fun um but let's get into it. I want to talk about soil mending. If you have heavy clay soil, what you can do and add to your soil for that. Some tips there. And I'm going to show you around the vegetable garden today, show you how things are doing. Um, I pruned my tomatoes the other day, so they're all cleared out. We'll talk about that. And I'll show you the upgrade we did for our rabbits. So as you can see here, uh, the large part of a willow came down and just made an absolute mess. We are very lucky because it did go like between where the garden is and where our flagpole is. So it really didn't hit any of the plants. It just blocked our driveway. Thankfully, none of our cars or anything like that had been hit. It came down in just the right spot. So. The real, really, the only thing it really caused was a whole lot of work. Coming around this bend, my dahlia was flat on the ground, and that was a little sad to see because I had just started with these this year. But um, I got it propped, but I really had to go back and cut it anyway. So going into the back, there was a little bit of mess back here. Some of my orchids had blown around. There was just minor damage back here it really wasn't too bad it's always interesting walking around after a bad storm you never know what you're going to find sometimes it's even a little bit exciting i don't know i find storms exciting i love watching the lightning and I don't like the damage, but I don't know. Why is it that storm bring, storms bring a sense of excitement with them? It, maybe it's the drama. I don't know. But going through the vegetable garden, where I was really happy to see nothing was really broken. Just some things kind of laying down to the side. My corn got hit pretty badly, but it's not beyond any kind of repair. So... We're going to get this all fixed up and tidied back up. Um, onions all seem to be fine and my tomatoes definitely need some pruning. So I'm back in the garden a couple days after the storm and I'm just kind of cleaning up. Had to do some propping on the tomatoes and the tomatillos. My tomatillos were just sprawled everywhere. So I gave them each a bamboo stake and got everybody kind of tied up and secure there. So one big thing about living where I live is we do have heavy, heavy soil, heavy clay soil. And so amending was extremely important. And when I first moved in, I found it was really hard to get into the ground, shovel, remove sod. Removing sod for me just on my own with a shovel is next to impossible. It's like trying to dig into concrete. So amending my soil was an absolute must. So what I do is I use a till. I'd rather not till in my gardens because I do like to garden organically but with the soil I have I just haven't found a better way to do this yet 
And so I get as much uh, organic material as possible for my ground. So when I clear a new area for a bed, removing the soil, sometimes my husband will do it for me with uh, like a flat nosed shovel or we will rent a sod remover for large areas. And, um, and next I start throwing in everything that we're going to kind of like till in. A lot, a lot, a lot of peat. You want to get huge bags of peat. It'll help break up the hard clay of your, of, in your soil and as much manure and compost as you possibly can. And you just build it and build it and build it. You can also add things like straw, hay, leaf material, um, local manure, but you don't want to plant directly into local fresh manure. Make sure the manure has aged, it has composted, or it's going to be too strong and acidic and can really hurt and harm new plants um, as well as established plants. You'll get burn. Um, so use aged aged manures and then you're just going to till it all in get it turned in get it into that bed as much as you can and keep layering every year don't just do it once and consider yourself good especially if your clay is if your clay is as bad as mine really turn it in keep adding throughout the garden season i bring a lot of um bagged manures and the compost that we make into the beds as often as i can i put down a lot of straw in my gar my vegetable garden and that we, that way every year that straw is getting retilled in and just think organic 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 you want to get that soil as hummusy is that a word hummusy as possible so you want soft dark rich soil um, the best you can get it I can't stress enough that your soil quality is the absolute best secret to good gardening you can buy all the great plants that you want, but if you have terrible, low quality soil, you're going to struggle. So there's my corgis. Well, there's two of them. We have three. The black and white one is Ben, and the little butt right there is Lady. <laughs> we call her Ladybug. Hi, baby girl. And here is the garden. The sunflowers are just blooming away and they're beautiful. Um, so happy with my sunflowers this year because I've been wanting to do them right there for a couple of years now and I just never got around to it until now. And I am not disappointed. So the boxed uh, beds are doing pretty good. Everything's filling in. I've been bringing in cucumbers all week. We made some bread and butter pickles yesterday. And let me know if you're interested in, in, in um, some spice mixes for your pickle brines. Um, we can definitely talk uh, the spice blends for different flavors of pickles. And here we are. Look at my, look at my um, watermelons. <laughs> watermelons are growing. I have another one down here. And just hoping they don't ripen too fast, but that they get some size before they start getting too green. So I'm keeping my eye on them, giving them lots of water. We have some peppers forming down here. I'm going to let these get red and sweet before any picking. And let's see, jalapenos. Can't wait to pickle some jalapenos. I'm gonna do a sweet pickling on the jalapeno so it's like a hot and spicy sweet pickled jalapeno let me know if you would like to see that i can do a video when i make those um everything is doing really good we're just moving along i had something nibbling on my um my broccoli hey lady something was nibbling on my break broccoli when it was small and i used organic insecticidal soap on it and it got rid of it so now we just have the leftover munched holes but it has stopped so the insecticidal soap worked really well tomatillos are forming very excited about these because this is the first time i've grown them and coming into the tomatoes you can see, if you've watched any of my other videos, you can see I've cleared these out 
quite a bit. You can actually distinguish the actual rows now. They were so full and thick. I couldn't even see any of the tomatoes. So I went through and I lopped off a lot of the extra branches, lower branches, branches that weren't really producing anything but leaves. Um, I cut a lot, of, a lot of them away to clear up uh, not only the rows, but just lighten up the plants themselves so they could stand up better, get them well supported on their stakes and um, get some sun exposure down to the actual tomatoes so that they can ripen and get some sun. So uh, in here I have, I think these are, these here are beef steaks that are still very small. I have some heirlooms here that are doing really well. And then there's some Romas down in there as well. So not much to report on the tomatoes just yet other than the pruning. They are all doing really well. We're going to have a lot. And if you didn't see it, go back and watch my video on how to grow healthy tomatoes. I'll talk to you about what I did to feed them, link you back to a feeding video, and how to avoid blossom end rot in your tomatoes. So my corn did get a little bit flattened the other day in that windstorm. Um, there's a little bit of breakage here and there, but look at how well my corn is producing. Everything's doing really good. And I was really devastated after that storm because everything was like kind of like laying this way and all pushed over. So we put up some stakes and we just put, we started putting twine around where it was really badly bent down and gave all the stalks support that way. There's another stake here running down this row and just kind of got everything back up and supported this way and it looks like that worked pretty good with the exception of a couple pieces that were just too badly broken um, that they're not really going to be able to stand back up. There's only a couple so it's not too devastating. Um, see there's a couple in there that are laying, laying down but I can't complain because um, that storm was bad and the damage could have been far worse than it was. So my little corn patch is doing well still. Um, we have nice ears forming and I'm still kind of giving everything a shake, making sure everything gets pollinated. If you go back and watch some of my garden tour videos, I give you some tips on growing corn and how to make sure they're getting pollinated, shaking and releasing pollens through the through the little corn patch. I did find this volunteer that I talked about on a video before. I have two of them that I guess got planted by birds. There's one over there and there's one over here and I didn't know what they were, but we're growing a little blue squash. <laughs> so it is producing. And I'm sure we'll get more than just that one eventually. So thank you birds. So I'll bring you up here and I'll show you, we did get the new hutch in for the rabbits. So come into the shade garden. And in here, I just have some squashes growing. There's one down there. That's a butternut squash and some crooknecks down in there. And I just give these guys um, an area where they get partial shade during the day um, because their leaves just tend to really fight water loss. So they're doing well in here. Not everything I put in here is doing well, but the squash and the black beans, which are right here, definitely are doing well. I have a runner bean here that's doing well. And even my carrots are doing pretty well. I, I threw some extra carrots in here and they're even performing quite well. But here's the bunnies. I have to clean them. <gasps> Look, there's Rune. <laughs> he came right out. 
Hi, baby. So he's, yeah, he's ready for breakfast and ready for some cleaning. So I'm going to get that done. The dogs love the bunnies. Have to watch everything they do. Rune is not very shy, but Taro is. Taro kind of stays inside and she'd rather not anybody fuss with her, but he likes people. He's, a, he's actually a little cuddle bug. <laughs> it's okay. So I'm going to get them fed and cleaned and I will be back. Okay, the bunnies are clean and fed. Everyone is happy. There's Taro in there. Let's see if we can see her. There she is. Hi, baby. <laughs> and there's Rune happily munching away on his breakfast. Too cute. This is just a quick tour around the flower gardens. Everything was just fine after the storm, no real damage out here. So everything's blooming away. I'm waiting for my roses to flush out again. Daylilies are going strong this time of year. So are the oriental lilies. And I have another um, perennial hibiscus back in there I'm waiting to bloom. This is a beautiful stargazer lily. And that rose is sceptered isle, a beautiful bloomer from David Austin. Beautiful day lily. Little hydrangea. Beautiful This is a strawberry vanilla hydrangea, which will turn more pink as the summer goes on. So this is after cleaning up from the storm. As you can see, the garden really wasn't hit by the tree. So that's good. I am going to have a lily tour coming up in just a couple of days. I'll show you all the different lilies I've had growing throughout the season. And tell you about how to take care of lilies. Come around here, and my um, my big perennial hibiscus is blooming. My dahlia got hit by that storm and so there I had to cut a lot of the blooms off and bring them inside for a bouquet off of this stock that was laying down so that one's still suffering but this stock seems to be okay now and starting to bloom again so I'm a little sad because this is my first year growing these dinner plate dahlias um, but again, things could have been worse. The blooms are a little bit nicer over here facing the sun. A lot of leaves. I'm waiting for the upper flowers to bloom and then the flowers will look a little bit more prominent and that under the cover of so many leaves. So I'll get it as it blooms more as well. 
black-eyed Susans that are coming into bloom. Always so pretty. And this is a weed <laughs> that my hummingbirds absolutely love and the butterflies really enjoy it. So I just let it come up and bloom right here every year. And I think even for a weed, it's very beautiful and it doesn't really seem to spread. It just comes up like this every year. I've been letting it grow for the last three years and this is all it does. I'm not really sure what it is. So if you can tell me what this weed is, I would appreciate it and it just looks really pretty growing here with the black eyed Susan and this little day lily. A couple orchids out that I let enjoy the rain the other day. There's Fenrir eating weeds. <laughs> Why are you eating weeds? Pretty forget me nots that Fenrir is nosing around at. It's such a pretty little blue. So that wraps up today walking through the garden and making some tea, cleaning up some mess, and just enjoying the day in the garden, listening to the birds and trying to enjoy the summer as much as we can. It's been a very hot summer for everyone and I hope you're all doing okay out there. I know certain states you're probably suffering quite a bit with this heat and I'm so sorry you're going through that. I hope you all get some rain and I hope you get some relief from the heat coming up very soon and I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.